Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a banned Defenders deck featuring Arcadus, the strategist as commander, voted on by my supporters on Patreon, 3-5 uh, with Flying and Vigilance, saying whenever a creature with Defender enters a battlefield under our control we get to draw a card, and each creature we control with Defender assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So this deck specifically calls for creatures with Defender, so having high toughness by itself is not enough, we actually need the Defender keyword to synergize with Arcadis. And the deck picked up quite a few new tools with Dominaria United, which had a bit of a Defender sub-theme and limited, so cards like Walking Bulwark, letting our Defenders attack even if we don't have Arcadis. We've got the Shield Wall Sentinel, which can tutor up any creature with Defender, and it's often going to grab a Wing Mantle Chaplain, making a 1-1 Bird token for each creature with Defender we control, and each subsequent Defender will also generate a 1-1 Bird token. And we've got the Vine Wall, which can also help us hit our land drops, so just some of the new additions from Dominaria. Then I've divided the deck into a few different categories, starting with a ramp, because ideally we can play Arcadis turn 3, so turn 4 we can already start drawing extra cards, otherwise the deck can feel a little bit sluggish. So we've got Caretaker as a defender that can potentially ramp us if we can play another creature alongside it. Then we've got Explorer and Grow Spiral to play extra lands and to draw a card into the north can just find one of our snow lands. I'm still playing the regular basics since I wanted to include the Dominaria full art lands, but we still have some snow lands in our mana base here. As you can see with the Flood Plane and there's one in each color pair. And then we've got the Overgrown Battlement, one of the better ramp cards in the deck, making a green for each creature with Defender we control. And this can easily get out of hand. We've got a ton of colorless cards we can play, so we can sink all that green mana into drawing more cards with Arcadis as well. And then we've got some typical ramp artifacts with Signet, Cold Seal Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone at 3 mana Cultivate, and then finally Mirari's Wake can also potentially pump the team and double the mana our lands produce. Then we get to some of the other defenders, not going to go into all the specifics. Drawbridge, another addition from Dominaria, can also tap something down. Watchdog is nice for protection. The Haste on Errant is actually quite useful as well, as it allows you to attack right away. Zombie for card selection. And then we've got some other walls here to round out to 1-drops. At 2 mana there's Flumph, which has Flying, which is actually a pretty relevant keyword. Means it can attack for 4 in the air once we have Arcadis down. Birth can find a play on Chapter 2 makes a wall token. And the Coral Colony, not really an alternate win condition since milling 100 cards is pretty difficult, but uh, still just 4 toughness for 2 mana, which is a fine rate. And then we also have the Wall of Blossoms as one of the more exciting defenders, which draws a card when it enters. And uh, the Drawbridge to give the Team Haste can also come up. So those are some of the 2 mana defenders. Then Teo can make multiple wall tokens, gives us Hexproof as well. Got the Carbon Carrier, it also draws when it enters, and the Effigy from Alchemy potentially lets us play creatures off the top, although will be in the form of 1 1 birds, so sometimes can be a drawback, and we would rather just draw the cards naturally to have more toughness to synergize with Arcadis. Then we also have a few counter spells Swan Song, Wash Away for opposing commanders, and then a Negate and Dovin's Veto for non creatures, and Intervention can be a way to save our team from a sweeper effect. Since for the most part we want to pull ahead with Arcadis, draw a ton of cards, make a lot of defenders, which will often overpower the opponent's creatures once we have Arcadis down, so it's all about just protecting the team and make sure the opponent doesn't mess with Arcadis. Then we've got some additional card advantage with Rigo, which rewards us for hitting the opponent with creatures with power 1 or less. Then a Guardian Project can draw when a creature enters, and Oracle also lets us play extra lands off the top. And then we've got kind of the wild cards and some additional interaction. Source to Plowshares, just too good not to include as a one mana removal spell. Then there's the Ages of the Heavens, as well as Tower Defense as ways to pump our team and potentially get a lot of damage out of nowhere. Then there's Tetsuko to make our team unblockable, very powerful in creature matchups. And then we also have both Assault Formation and High Alert as enchantments that let us deal damage equal to our toughness rather than power, in case the opponent deals with Arcadis and we need an alternate win condition. 
and then a slaughter the strong is a very powerful sweeper often a one-sided effect as we have lots of creatures with zero power so the opponent will have to sacrifice a bunch until they're left with total power four or less and Dusk to Dawn, if we cast Dusk, destroys all creatures with power 3 or greater. Does kill our own Arcades, but for the most part still going to be a one-sided sweeper. And then Time Warp is too good to ignore if you're playing blue to take an extra turn. And Reverse Rebuke, a powerful one-sided bounce effect. And then Towering Titan will enter with a number of plus one counters on it, where X is the total toughness of creatures you control. Can also sacrifice a creature with Defender to give our team a trample until end of turn. It's another fun win condition. And then a mana base, pretty straightforward, just lots of mana fixing. Couple utility lands with channel here, but for the most part just focusing on getting our lands in play so we can cast our spells in a timely fashion and draw a ton of cards with Arcades. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw facing elves and hand seems pretty good. Into the north can get my white mana. And then Rebuke, great at bouncing a whole bunch of elf tokens. So we'll get white green here. Not playing snow covered basics, just so I can play the Dominaria full art lanes. Alright, I think it's time for Arcades. Unless we want to play it a little differently. Maybe play like a Guardian Idol plus Vine Wall. So next turn can maybe play Arcadis and a Defender right away in case they have some removal. Yeah, I could buy that too. And I'll get the uh, Forest here. There's Tyvar. Shepherd can now make black mana. And a Bastion of Remembrance. Play Arcadis plus Drawbridge for haste. Get to draw. And sure, might as well. And then next turn we could go with a Chaplain plus Bookcase. They do have removal for Arcadis, sadly. Could just replay Arcadis. Opponent foretells what could be the reanimation spell for Elves. Who knows. Um, now we could also go with Chaplain to kill Tyvar with our birds, which I don't mind. And then play Cold Steel Hearts to develop our mana to replay Arcadis. Okay. Huntmaster can make lots of elf tokens. I think we go for Arcadis once again and then wait one more turn on River's Rebuke. Make a bird, draw a card. Hmm. Didn't leave myself with blue mana left, but we also have some green and white one drops, so. Uh, let's see. Activate Drawbridge. Seems worth it. And then probably don't want to attack with Chaplain or my Tutu. Everything else is good to go. Points at 15. And yeah, next turn, River's Rebuke could close out the game. Hmm. 
Ooh, a blood on the snow. That's unfortunate. Gets back Huntmaster, explains why they blocked with it last turn. So we need to rebuild. But we have the technology. So this is going to leave me with one mana. Let's make sure not to take any unnecessary damage. I guess we can still play both one drops here. That's nice. Okay. Opponent's down to one card in exile, I believe, and it's a return upon the tide to bring back Shepard, make some elves. We're gonna keep drawing. Ooh, Towering Titan, don't mind if I do. 15 15. And next turn, that's gonna crash in for the win. Although we do have to watch out for Shepard, which also represents quite a bit of damage. So I might use Drawbridge to tap an elf down. We'll gain one as well here. Alright. Opponent activates gate, so not interested in using Shepard. Okay. Can probably just win the game with Towering Titan. Giving our team trample, but Rivers Rebuke is the easier solution. Can tap something down. Yeah, you know what, let's see if we can win without Rivers Rebuke. Since that card's kind of a cheat code. Ooh, tower defense. Well, that will certainly do it. Move to combats, attack. And sacrifice a defender to give the team trample and then pump all my attackers by five onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Yarok. Sultai enters the battlefield and we've got a keeper. Fetch up a forest, turn to spiral, turn three Arcadis. And then we've got swords for interaction. Opponent's got two mana ramp as well. It's only fair. And yeah, we've got a lot of one mana defenders here to draw with Arcadas. If we get the chance. More ramp artifacts. And a visionary. So next turn they could play their commander, plus maybe something cheap alongside it. Don't think I swords. Play Arcadas. And hope it survives, because next turn we could draw quite a few cards. And then we can sword Zyarok. So play Vine. Bulwark. And Birth. I guess we somehow drew all three planes, that's unfortunate. Okay, um, that's fine. Can attack with Arcadis and then we can wait for our opponent to maybe play an enters a battlefield creature and then swords Yarok in response. So that might throw off their plans. Rejuvenation, seek X creature enchantment and or planeswalker cards where X is the highest mana value. Well, we're gonna decrease their mana value here significantly. Well, still pretty good. Found a journey. This must be a clone, spark double, and cloud can seer. Okay. Don't have double green yet for towering titan. Play a vine wall to maybe find some more green mana. Um, I guess we might as well gain life in the process. Could play Arendt 
And then let's see what else is up. Tower defense also looking quite good. So now we can actually cast tower defense. Would it be lethal? Not quite. So it probably shouldn't bother playing it this turn. So we'll go with the tap plant. And maybe play our towering titan next turn as well. Well, now that I look at it, we might actually have lethal with tower defense. For guts, errant has haste. Which is actually pretty relevant with Arcadis. So our opponent gets one more turn. But we have a Dovin's Veto for any shenanigans. That's a shenanigan. And then Tower Defense should be able to cross the finish line. This is naming Black, so I guess they could still have instant speed removal for Arcadas. Get to untap. Now the Watchdog is going to make sure nothing bad happens to Arcadas. And as tempting as it may be to play Towering Titan, Tower Defense should be good enough here. Could even give the Watchdog haste with a Bulwark if we wanted to, but probably not necessary. Opponent chumps, but they're still going to take a massive hit. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing General Kudro, humans. This hand doesn't have any ramps, we'll try again. This is still missing acceleration, also no white mana, can draw with wall at least. And I guess Dust to Dawn could be quite powerful if we can eventually cast it. So maybe this is worth keeping. I think I'll hang on to my one mana defenders until after we play Arcadis. And then turn to Wall of Blossoms. Alright, there's our white. Caretaker's good as it ramps. Opponent with a venture on even, so it can attack past our wall. And we're going to play Caretaker. And that's probably it for now. The protection still doesn't help from uh, Dust to Dawn destroying it. Okay, opponent keeps up mana, so they could have removal for Arcadus here. But we do have a Swan Song, so can play Arcadus and then keep up Swan Song as opposed to playing a one drop. Now Arcadus would die to our Dust to Dawn, but can get some more value from it first. For now, Envoy can provide extra counters. So yeah, let's start playing some stuff out. Then we can either flash and turtle or counter something if needed. I guess the venture can block our wall now. Adlin is acceptable. Still dies to dusk. And no need to wash away Kudro. Turtle time. And sure, we'll keep going.
And a reverse rebuke also going to be excellent here. Alrighty. Probably could have tapped it a little bit better. That's okay. So attack with flying creatures. And that's it. And then we've got a counterspell for protection. Etchings to pump humans. That's acceptable. And our opponent's going for an all-out attack, since they know they're in trouble otherwise. Well, we can line up some pretty decent blocks, although we can also just take a pretty big hit. Block Kudro. Kudro can also use its ability, although I guess it's not very effective against our deck. So, let's see here, this is 15, 20, down to 2. I guess we can afford to block with one more. Opponent looking at the etching's ability, maybe. Make their creature indestructible. That's fine. We can use the uh, vine's ability, or we can keep up counter spells, which is probably more important. So our opponent would just be dead on board to an all-out attack. Underdog doesn't change it. All right, let's send all those creatures packing. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're facing Merfolk with Kumena, and we've got a Keeper. Cold Steel Heart for a turn 3 Arcadus. And then a couple walls to draw. Opponent off to a decent start. We'll name green, so we have double green for Carotid. And a Deep Root Waters can make lots of tokens. Very scary alongside Kumena. Well, let's hope they don't have answers to Arcadas here. Next turn we can play Karyotids plus Wall of Blossoms and see quite a few cards. Marrow Regery can tap down Arcadas. But for now just an attack for three. Ooh, Mirari's Wake. Hmm, I think I still want to double spell my creatures here if I can help it. And then maybe play Mirari's Wake in a turn where we can make use of the extra mana right away. We'll have to discard to hand size, but that's fine. River's Rebuke looking good. Probably don't need both Assault Formation and High Alert. So we have a backup win condition in case Arcadus gets answered. Yeah, the Rivers Rebuke bouncing all the Merfolk tokens is just going to buy us so much time. Kumena can start pumping the entire team with a last ability, tapping 5 untapped Merfolk. Taps down Arcadus with a Regery. But they did decide to attack instead of uh, pumping the team. They can still draw by tapping three Merfolk. Hmm, close call. If I play three defenders, I can possibly just kill my opponent next turn with a Rivers Rebuke. So that's another advantage. Assuming my opponent doesn't Rivers Rebuke me back, which is a real risk. There's also Tempest Caller to tap all my creatures down. So... Hmm, I guess I don't even have double blue, do I? So I have to play Mirari's Wake if I want a Rivers Rebuke next turn. Alright, change of plans. Play Mirari's Wake. And Sundew. Okay. 
And then I'm probably good to attack with Arcades. I think I leave everything else back just to be safe. Opponent's gonna draw end of turn. And then next turn we can do lots of fun things. Hexcatcher to pump the team. And that also means they can potentially counter my Rivers Rebuke. Another Merfolk, tap another creature down. Seven coming across. So... Yeah, looks like we're just dead here. Opponent can still pump the team with Kumena. So this is the most damage I can prevent. So yeah, we're still dead here. So yeah, need a double blue for Rivers Rebuke, but we didn't quite have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Turn to can play a Growth Spiral or Mind Stone to make sure we have a turn 3 Arcades, in case we don't pick up another land. And we're up against a Muldrotha Graveyard deck. Turn 1 Elves. Now I'm probably in favor of Growth Spiral. Keep the Wall of Vines until after we play Arcades. Dry it for ramp. Alright, opponent's off to a nice start. At least we don't need to worry about a counter spell here. Then we're a bit light on defenders, so hopefully we can string together a few of them. Next turn we could already see Muldrotha. Negate's nice too if we can keep that up. Although I might just go Mindstone into Bulwark for now. And then starting next turn maybe keep up Negate and now Vito as well. Can use Aegis as a combat trick to maybe get past Muldrotha. Storm Tamer is fine. Won't be targeting their stuff. And the Bulwark also gives us an alternate win condition in case something bad happens to Arcades. That way to shrink down a wall. That's fine. So, yep, yeah, let's attack. Could sacrifice Mindstone. Maybe that's still worth it. Okay. Opponent takes it. Maybe next turn we can go for lethal with Aegis. There's Moldrotha. Can bounce it with uh, Soaring City. Maybe in response to the fetch before they can use the Storm Tamer here. And now they won't be able to replay the Dryad from the graveyard. Ah, they still have a Gilded Goose. Might actually save them here if they block with it. We can scry. And attack. So, can hit them for 13. That should do it. Awesome. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Multani ramp deck, presumably. This hand's not quite good enough. This is missing green. Although, Larder Zombie can maybe help us find it. I'll try it. Still going for a turn to Guardian Idol. Opponent's got Florahedron for ramp. So, not opposed to playing a Chaplain next turn. If we don't have anything else going on. Alright, there's green, so now we can play Arcadus much better. And next turn, Zombie plus Chaplain. Nissa's quite scary. And Reclaimer sacrifices a land to find another forest. And Recovery getting back. Vastwood Surge. Probably go for Wall. And then Chaplain. Do we want an Explorer? Probably not at this point. And then Umezawa can make our birds unblockable as well, even if they have a big reach creature out. So you should be able to deal with Nissan next turn, but they could do some damage here. They could play a kicked fast with Surge. It's gonna be a Multani first. 8 8. Can eventually tap it down with a drawbridge. And there's a kick to fast with Surge. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Still have some reasonable blocks available. Maybe just a forest attacking. How close are we to just straight up killing the opponent next turn? Problem is tower defense does not deal extra damage with the birds since those aren't defenders. So... I think the birds we can probably throw under the bus. Intervention can help us soak up some damage too. But for now we need to deal with Nissa. Okay. So start with Drawbridge. Make a bird draw a card. Wall of Vines. Probably gonna end up playing Tetsuko here so we can attack Nissa. Unopposed. Would like to hit my land drop. So, Larder Zombie can help me look at the uh, top card in response to the draw. And a land will keep on top. Okay, so we'll play this untapped. So I can play wall and then still play Tetsuko. Probably could have played this first in case we drew another land that didn't cost me any life. And we actually found island, that's okay. So we can kill Nissa, and these we can send face. And then the trampling Multani is still scary, but the rest we can chump if needed with our birds. And then a uh, tower defense to hopefully close out the game. Reclaimer goes digging. It's also growing Multani, which counts lands in Graveyard. Of 
going to get some memorial for a card advantage. Two cards left. Activates memorial, that's good news. Ashaya, pretty good too. But they need an answer to Tetsuko. Alright, opponent's attacking. Trump with the birds. And I call the ambush to kill Arcades. Fair enough. So now we may not have the mana to replay Arcadus and tower defense, although opponent's still looking like they're in a bit of trouble here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Phylath, the World Sculptor, and we've got a Keeper here. Cold Steel Heart setting up turn 3 Arcades. And uh, I guess we'll play this on white and scry towards another land. Uh, do I want a tapped one? Not really. Since we want to curve out here. And Cold Seal Heart naming blue, although now that we drew a blue-white one, probably doesn't matter much anymore. Still go with blue. Turn two Cobra's always scary. And an Oracle, so next turn they could easily already play Phylath, so I might need to keep up Wash Away instead of playing Arcades. Although the Oracle is still going to go off here with all these fetch lines regardless. So not in an enviable position. I guess I'll still go with Deserted Beach in case we need to veto and Arcades, or I can tap out for high alerts. And then still keep up Wash Away. So the opponent may not necessarily uh, play around it. Augur of Autumn is also very good. But we'll deal with Phylath for now. And then we can play Arcades and maybe attack with a Hasty Errant. Ooh, Time Warp's good too, but we'll get Arcadas down first. They might already be able to replay Phylath here. So we're still in a bit of trouble. Yeah, turn 2 Cobra, turn 3 Oracle is a powerful start. Ashaya represents more landfall traders with Cobra, but they shuffled it away. There's Phylath making six plants. Another land with Oracle. Excavator is also nice with the fetch lands. So yeah, Poon's got a nice Phylath deck here. Play Watchdog and then don't have a ton of amazing attacks. Can attack with Arcadas for five, thanks to high alerts. And we'll time warp since we don't have anything else going on. Signet's not quite what we needed. Opponent's not playing many non-creature spells, so this Dovin's Veto is not looking great. And an unchecked Oracle is just so much value. Alright. 
A roiling regrowth will counter. And a radar. Alright, so they've got several ways to play lands off the top. This can also be activated next turn. But for now, no attacks. Okay. Let's hopefully string together some defenders. So, yeah, let's uh, just hit with Arcadus once again. Hope to top deck. Maybe an Aegis. Tetsuko would maybe do it. For now, our opponent's digging with Fertilid to shuffle the top of their deck as well. And that's going to be a lot of damage coming in. We can maybe chump with a watchdog and then sacrifice it to make something else indestructible. So their opponent's got an army of four fives. And they're not done yet. Timeless witness. Get something back out of the graveyard. Roiling regrowth maybe. So that's two more triggers at instant speed. It's going to make it impossible for us to block. All the plants attack. Rada can still be pumped. So I can chump Rada with a plan of making something indestructible. Let's see, how much damage is this? 20. They might go for a Roiling Regrowth instead of Rada. So this is 16. If they go for a Roiling Regrowth, I still die. So I have to jump here. And then Roiling Regrowth is two more triggers. So 12 plus... 8 is 20 still. But if I don't block Rada, they just pump Rada instead. So maybe I need to switch these up. Incentivize them to activate Rada. It's the best I can do, I think. Alright. So in that case, probably still making Arcadus indestructible. So we can top deck a pump spell for the win. Alright, we don't have a lot of outs, but uh, there's a few. Mirari's Wake, so close. Can put the opponent to one. It's not quite lethal. Alright, GG's. If only we had a fog effect. Bones are gonna keep comboing here. We'll let them have their fun. Yeah, countering the opponent's commander is not too effective when they're playing a ramp strategy and they can just replay it on the following turn.
But yeah, the Cobra definitely one of the MVPs this game. Still got our opponent to one. Just needed to string together a couple more defenders. Alright, are they done? Activate Rada. 2020. And that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Feather, and we've got a Keeper. Spiral setting up turn 3 Arcadus, hopefully. And then uh, some nice interaction as well. Still need to draw land. There we go. And then I'm going to keep Errant until after we play Arcadus. Opponent taps out for Feather, we'll tap out for Arcadus, it's only fair. And I don't expect too much removal here, but you never know. Definitely can't afford to block since they might have any number of pump spells. Kick in the door for starters. Opponent's cries. And we'll take four. So at the very least we can play two defenders and then keep up negate. Swords is nice. Although they could have some protection. Might be okay playing the tap land here, and then we can uh, play Errant and still Swords or Negate, depending on what we need. We'll see what our opponent wants to play here. Light of Hope for a plus one counter. If they go for another pump spell here, I can Swords, but our opponent plays it safe. So they probably have a protection spell that they can use here. Ooh, a go for blood. That seems worth countering since I don't think swords is going to work here, sadly. So we'll negate. And hope they tap out so we can uh, exile feather. Selfless savior doesn't help. Okay, so we might have gotten our wish. Could also play Towering Titan, but I think this is our opportunity to Swords over River's Rebuke and then maybe string together some more defenders with Errant. Very nice. And yeah, we can even play the bookcase, so we're going off. The haste here also quite relevant. I guess we can attack first, maybe that changes their play. Alright, goodbye Feather. And then between River's Rebuke and Titan we should be in great shape. With our opponent stuck on three lanes. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Alright, so we get to see our banned Arcadus Defenders deck in action. And yeah, the new additions from Dominaria make it more fun than ever before. Still a relatively fair historic brawl deck, so not one of the better decks I've played recently. But still a lot of fun, especially if you can close out the game with a tower defense. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.